But while Mr. Lee continued taking photos, he gradually began to question the group's purpose and activities. A denunciation rally in August 1966. This is a photo of the Heilongjiang Provincial Party Committee Secretary being denounced. Mr. Lee could not understand why the Red Guards dashed black paint or made people wear dunce hats. This is the Heilongjiang Daily, which reported on the rally. Mr. Lee's photos of personal denouncement, which would damage the revolution's image, were never published in the newspaper. Mr. Lee also saw a scene that was hard to believe. Two factory technicians published a mimeograph newspaper called Facing North, which the party interpreted as facing Russia, enemy to the North. This brought charges against the two as a crime against the revolution, and they were executed. At the time of the execution, one of the men cried out, this world is too dark. With his hands tied, he cried out, this world is too dark. Then he closed his eyes, never to open them again. Whether one's eyes are open or closed, this is a dark world. I'm sure that's what he wanted to emphasize. The authorities would frequently demand that the newspaper hand over all photos that might damage the party's image. Mr. Lee made the decision to hide his negatives. He dug a hole under the floorboards of his house, wrapped the negatives in oil paper, and buried them. In December of 1968, Mr. Lee was denounced by a colleague who he thought he could trust. Mr. Lee was brought before the denunciation rally on the charge of plotting to overtake the newspaper. At that time, it was a situation where you had to attack your opponent or be attacked yourself. When I look back now on my experience as the leader of the rebel group, I can see that I was flying high. But now, I was being denounced, and I felt extreme pain. At that time, I realized how I also caused other people to suffer pain like this. During the day, Mr. Lee was denounced at the rally, and at night, his house was searched. A search for proof of the plot to take over the newspaper. While the authorities confiscated my letters and notes, I prayed they can take everything else, but please don't find those negatives. Luckily, the negatives weren't discovered. When they left, I was so overcome with relief that I collapsed into bed. The 100,000 negatives recording the Cultural Revolution were safe. But the following year, Mr. Lee was to face a severe punishment. Mr. Lee and his wife were sent to the Liuhe May 7th Cadet School under the premise that both lacked a sufficient understanding of the revolution.
The Lioja May 7th Cadet School was a collective farm established in 1968 by the party for re-education of party executives. In reality, this was a place for government officials, intellectuals, and others to be sentenced to hard labor. It was located in a region where the temperatures fell to minus 22 degrees Fahrenheit in the winter. Mr. Lee worked as a lumberjack. He did not know when he would be released. He was held for two years. This is the Herbin Residence Sports Coliseum. Here, denunciation rallies and meetings were held daily. Mr. Lee often came here on assignment. In September 1966, Mr. Lee photographed an influential person being overthrown. That person was the Heilongjiang provincial governor. I was shooting scenes of the people from below. Then an announcement was made that provincial governor Li Fan Wu had the same hairstyle as Chairman Mao. And that was proof of his political ambitions. Mr. Lee looked wide-eyed through the camera's viewfinder. The Red Guards began to cut provincial governor Li Fenwu's hair. This Red Guard used barber's clippers and adjusted them so they wouldn't cut smoothly. When hair got caught in the blades, he would suddenly yank the clippers out. You could see blood appearing where the hair was pulled out. That was just too cruel a thing to do. At the denunciation rally, provincial governor Li Fenwu's wife, Li Xia, had black paint spread across her face. Mr. Lee, hoping to get details of the incident from Provincial Governor Li Fenwu's daughter, visits her at home. Li 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 is 64 years old. <laughs> <laughs> Forty years ago, when the Cultural Revolution began, she was a student at the Herbing Engineering University and a member of the Red Guard. Lili begins to talk about her father's denouncement. This photo was taken in August 1966 in Tiananmen Square when one million people gathered for the Cultural Revolution Celebratory Congress and Li 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 shook hands with Chairman Mao. Li Li, who happened to be in Beijing, was appointed by the government authorities to be the student representative giving a speech. We will accomplish the goal of the Cultural Revolution to the end. Long live Chairman Mao. Long live the Chinese Communist Party. When I finished reading the speech and turned around, Chairman Mao was standing there. 
I heard later that while I was reading the speech, Chairman Mao was looking at the paper over my shoulder. Lili made the declaration, we will accomplish the goal of the Cultural Revolution to its completion. But this speech gave rise to hurtful rumors about her father. Rumors spread that provincial governor Li Fenwu's political ambition drove his daughter into Tiananmen Square. Because her father's hairstyle was similar to Chairman Mao's, and because of the speech Lili gave, political criticism toward her parents increased. Lili has carefully stored the clothes her parents had worn during the denunciation rally. These are father's pants. His name, Li Fenwu, is written on them. These are mother's pants. Oh, At that time, mother, who had a stooped back, was told to stand up straight and was stabbed in the buttocks repeatedly with a drill bit. When the rebel group came to arrest mother, I was at home when they knocked on the front door. Mother pushed me into the closet. At that time, mother told me, remember to always trust your father and mother. We are loyal Communist Party members. We haven't done anything wrong. Since then, I've firmly believed that father and mother have never deceived me. While sharing her story, she explains that her older sister was the one who indicted her father. Shortly after the Cultural Revolution began, the rebel group went to the middle school where my older sister was a teacher. They threatened her. Your younger sister needs an attitude readjustment, so we plan to denounce her. At any rate, you'll end up just like her. We're going to try all of you, father and children. My sister became frightened. She told them she could not write an indictment. Then the rebel group told her they would write one, so they made up a false indictment, claiming my father had illicit affairs and made my sister copy it. In 1966, following in the footsteps of her father and mother, Li 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 was also imprisoned by the Red Guards. It took seven years before Li Li was able to see her parents freely. Before the Cultural Revolution, we were one happy family. As sisters, we got along well. Wherever we went, we went together as a family. And we had a terrific home life. Why did my sister do something like that to betray my father? As a result of that incident, I've limited any contact with my sister. Even now, they are estranged. Mr. Lee also wanted to hear the older sister's story regarding the circumstances, but in the end, he was unable to speak with her.
After hearing Lili's story, Mr. Lee remembered another photo he took. In October 1966, Mr. Lee accompanied a unit of the Red Guards from Heilongjiang province to Beijing. At that time, he photographed Chairman Mao meeting with the people. This is a photo of the Red Guards after the chairman's car had driven past them. This girl has written down that this was an extreme moment of happiness. Mr. Lee decides to visit this Red Guard. Shu oh. Su Yun is 61 years old. At the time of the photo, she was a student at the Herbin Foreign Language Technical College. In 1967, she had joined an influential revolutionary committee as a Red Guard member. This committee had overthrown the previous government. She brings out a picture. It is a photo of a group from the Heilongjiang Revolutionary Committee visiting Beijing in April 1967. This is the former Prime Minister, Tso Enlai. Also in the photo with Shu is Zhang Qing, a leader of the Cultural Revolution who was later sentenced to death. Mm. The Revolutionary Committee was expanding into the Northeast region and calling it the New Dawn. I thought it was a really great honor to be able to work there, and I was bragging to everyone. Mr. Li shows Shu the photo of Provincial Governor Li Fenwu getting his head shaved. This is just terrible. I can't stand to look at this. I've never been in such an awful situation. The provincial governor was overthrown, and you participated in the newly formed Revolutionary Committee. So, as a former committee member, what are your thoughts? Looking at these photos and recalling the movement to overthrow the capitalist leaders, I suppose extreme measures had to be taken sometimes. But personally speaking, I learned much from my superiors in the committee. And I worked diligently. The committee was where I started out. And I don't regret that I worked there. I am satisfied with the path that I have chosen. <laughs> Ms. Shi continued to work for a government agency after the Cultural Revolution rising to the position of department head. She